So, we are in the Lunar New Year. That doesn't make us lunatic, okay? <laughs> because the whole Chinese calendar is based on the cycle of the moon, right? And when you sometimes look at a cartoon, eh, whenever the moon goes, then the wolf goes, whoo! <laughs> so do you know that what year is it now? 2024 is the Gagarian calendar. Okay? In the Chinese year, it's 4722. Interesting, right? I was doing, doing some research. You know, say, wow, 4,722. 4, the years are, sh the numbers of days are shorter. Because the full cycle of a moon is 29 and a quarter or something like that. All right? But do you know that it takes 60 years to complete one cycle? In the Chinese calendar, in the Chinese year. You know that, not, Sion? No, right? I also didn't know that, you know? Something if I say 60, how did they get 60 years? Because animals already got 12 animals, am I right? Right, 12 is finished, right? But interesting is that they got two components they got the celestial component and the terrestrial component. So they got 10 of the celestial, 12 of the terrestrial. So let's say if they have, uh, they always go like that. If it's the number one, the first year of the celestial, one, they started with red. I think one red. Two, that goes through. So the permutation as you go through, one complete cycle to come back is 60 years. One circuit going through. Interesting, eh? But the interesting part as well is that the Jewish calendar is also very similar. The Hebrew calendar is also very similar to the Chinese. Instead of the leap month that we have, they have a leap year. One whole year leaping onto that. So when we look at all these traditions as they go through, for the Chinese, the word Nian is not year, but the word Nian is actually a demon, a dragon. So tradition has it that a Furious, a very furious, fierce dragon during that time will come on the eve to eat up people. And that's my piece of a very fat dragon. Right, not? After eating one already, yeah, cannot go. As the global population grows big, it must be a very fat lion, a uh, dragon. So even today, sometimes it's been symbolized in such a way. So they only believe that. To frighten away, they must make noise and must wear red. My one fail, uh, because I got red and black. Huh? So confused, uh, it probably come and eat me up, okay? But while well, Sihon and Tammy, whoa, the, the dragon ran away. Adanira, uh, so whoa, right? But interesting, interesting in the sense that the early Chinese has knowledge about Satan, to know that the dragons are coming in to attack in such a way. But no matter how much of the fire, the firecrackers will not get through. But what, to me, what's interesting is that why red? Why red? Why is it not blue? Not yellow? Not gold? Because the Chinese like gold a lot because it's royalty, right? Why red? Red points to sacrifice. In the early days, you look to sacrifice, Right? But it points basically back to the sacrificial of our Jesus Christ that is for us. Sometimes the Chinese culture are very, very similar to that. If you look through the whole history of mankind, when we talk about mourning, right? The Bible always talks when you mourn, you put on sackcloth, am I right? Today, we don't see that much. But the Chinese, when they die, the immediate family put on sackcloth. Okay? No, I, I was checking. No other religion, do, no, no other race do that. 
Interesting is that why when they pray, they use three joystick? Why not ten? Why not one? Why three? Why have three cups? Is it Father, Son and Holy Spirit? We do not know. A lot of things are related because it could be down to the power of Babel when they disperse back, some of the things are following through. Revelation chapter 12, verses 9, the great dragon, the old serpent, calls the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. So that culture has been in there. To us today, when we go through, Chinese New Year, everybody talks about, today, Chinese New Year are very different. When, when we were young, my children say, but I have, Daddy, don't talk about young age. We are looking forward to new things, you know. Every, every Chinese New Year means new clothings. Without fail, we will go all the way. Those days, we were in Johor Bahru. We have to go all the way to Woodlands because everything was cheaper in Singapore. Today is the other way around. <laughs> you know, we used to take bus all the way, you know, to the Pasar Pagi and buy, buy uh, shirts, you know, for Chinese New Year and things like that. All things looking for new because it's one new year, you know. And again, everything has been red and things like that. Looking forward to a new the, the tradition that binds us. Today, buying new clothing is like norm because you don't need to have a reason to buy. So today, New Year celebration is like a norm. Food also, like chicken rice is every day, so you can eat chicken rice really, right? But as we move through in life, when you look through the Chinese tradition through, they always go for blessing, right? And a new life, starting the new year as you go through. Now, when we look through blessing, it's not about what mankind can give to you. To have a blessed life, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So our blessing is not from the wealth that we take. There are people who have money. The money becomes a curse. Why? Because their life becomes so fearful. Oh, yo, I'm going to lose it. Uh. Oh, all the money that I have. Uh. Oh, yo, who, is going to, who, who is going to steal it? But if you are righteous and walk before God, it's a blessing. What means do you take the money? That's, that's the main thing. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you do not know where you are going, God is there for you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be Satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. That's the blessing that we look through. Not about the blessing of money or whatever that comes because all those things are temporary. You might have a nice car. Can you bring the car to heaven with you? But anyway, if you don't want a car, you can give it to me. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's the kind of thing, you know. So sometimes to us, it's not about how we live on this earthly world. The Chinese tradition always, you know, when someone passing through the passage, you know, oh, they feel so philopite, and they spend close to 50,000, 100,000 to have this ceremony to build paper houses, paper cars, and then burn it, hoping that these people will receive it after life. And my, whenever I see such a thing, I always tell them, why don't you spend quality time 
with the deceased when they are alive. What you do by burning, you only make the guy who sells this thing rich. Right? Then I always tell them, oh, they got handphone, iPad, and everything. Say, hey, you forgot to send a generator, gen set. Uh. Right? How does this thing work? You see? So sometimes when we go through, the real thing that we go through at the end of the day, we must know that every one of us here is a new creation. We don't need anything new anymore. Right? Are we a new creation? Every one of us here are a new creation. Full stop. That's it. Move on. Don't be caught up every year you want something to go through. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 14. For the love of Christ control us because we have been concluded this, because we have concluded it is that, that one has died for all, therefore all has died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Wow. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, Though, even though we once regard Christ according to the flesh, we regard Him thus no longer. The key verse here is, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, beloved. Uh, behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to Him and give us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against Him and entrusted, entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, who are we? We are ambassadors for Christ. God make His Appeal through us. We employ you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. When we read the passage, every verse that we go through, right, there is a context to it. We cannot just take the Bible by itself, what God is telling us. So no verse can be understood without it content. And here, to, when we look at 2 Corinthians 5, 7, what is the context here? The context here is actually on the benefits of the resurrection, right? Resurrection. Without Christ's resurrection, are we here? No, right? Without death, we are not here. You say, hey, Pastor Chinese, you don't talk about death. Lah. Chinese is choi, 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 right? But without death, we will not be here today. It is His blood that washes and cleanses us. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to Himself. You know, Christ reconciled us. Where were we? Everyone was us. We are lost. We are in a lost world, not knowing where we're going. In this world that we live, every day we are bombarded. Am I right? There's so much negative thoughts that are going through. When we look through the situation, Sometimes say, where's our hope? In Malaysia, those days, oh, look at the government. You need the government. Everybody is going to, to break this government. It will not last long. If you are not reconciled with God, you are lost. Why? Because the world doesn't believe in that. The world is what we see. Faith is not by what we see. 
it is the faith in Christ that lifted us up. Walk by faith and not by sight. If you walk by sight, there'll be no hope. I just came back from Myanmar. I was just telling uh, Noreen's parents, the nation has gone back 10 years, backwards. Four years ago, when I went there, everything was moving smoothly. Things were doing very well. Today, Shangri-La closed down, Pullman closed down, most of the international hotels all shut down. Electricity, four hours, boom, goes out. Gen Z comes back in again. Looking at the situation through the eye of man, if you walk by sight, you say there's no hope. But I believe this is a time the church will rise up because I see the hunger of the people. The end of man is the beginning of God. And that is where man fails them. But if they have given heart to God, I believe that this year will be a year of breakthrough for Myanmar. We do not know how, but we have a great God. He's not going to let the people suffer. And God is going to do something great. In actual fact, like I said, I shared a week ago that I wanted to cancel the trip to Myanmar because planning it was so difficult because getting visas and all sorts of things, so much complication. I was on the verge of, I was telling Pastor Ruben, I said, I might move to Laos to do to that, you know. Just the program was, we wanted to reach out to the children and the adults using Good Friday and Easter Sunday and then the team comes back. You know, when going through so much complication to get the visa and a lot of the insurance here and there. But then God spoke to me. Son, you do not change what I put into your heart. The little seed that you go, as you go, I will be there for you. Wow. That really said, and I pray, and God makes a move. So continue to pray for us, and whatever I believe that uh, God has a plan for Myanmar, and I believe this will be the year of a breakthrough, that they would see a changes. Amen. Right? So when we go through, Christ himself reconciled us to himself, and give us the ministry of reconciliation. In verse 19, that is in, in Christ. God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting the trespasses against Him and entrusting us to the message of reconciliation. So we see right in the middle of this paragraph, we find that verse, it's a real gem, right? Therefore, if anyone in Christ is a new creation, the old has passed and the new begins. So what is the requirement? Here we are talking about something, right? If Anyone. Anyone. But if. So if here is not a universal condition. If. If who? If anyone. Not a specific name of a person, but if anyone. It doesn't refer to a person. If anyone. Here it talks about believers. Am I right? Talking about believers. So, if anyone, what's the condition? Believes in who? In Christ. Set the perimeter for the rest of the text. If anyone is in Christ. It's easy to be anyone. We are all anyone. But it takes faith to be in Christ. We are all anyone. But to be in Christ, that requires our faith. So sometimes we ask ourselves, we are the anyone. If anyone is in Christ, are we in Christ or not? Is Christ inside here? By the side here? Behind there? Where is Christ in your life? 
So a lot of the time, we just say, Christ, come up a bit more. I don't need you all. If, if Jesus is only take half of the body, you want to move, Jesus wants to move one way and you want to move one way. How? So how can a person be in Christ? Total surrender. Not 99%, you know, 100%. I used to give God, God, you take 99%, I still want to hold back the 1%. Sometimes the 1% dangling on. You know, sometimes your shirt, you got one, one, one tiny strings that pull it out. The whole shirt doesn't get tangled, but one, stri- one, one, one cotton that tangle, right? You try to pull that, ah, one big pole. So sometimes God wants us 100% to let go in Christ. Important, the moment we have it in Christ, the importance of this new creation. And we talk about new creation. Ray and I will say we are moving into a new year, right? Already coming to two months. But we need to remember every one of us is a new creation. In the past, we know that God created. Am I right? We didn't happen to be here as where we are. Genesis chapter 2, verses 3. Then God blessed the seven days and sanctified it because in it He rests from all His work which God has created and made. God created everything. One day, a scientist turned around to God and said, God, I can make what you do as well. I'm a man of science. You created things, I so can do things. Exactly the same using science. Okay? You want to challenge God? All right. So here, God is one side, scientists on the side. God begins to make the animals, the plants, and everything, right? The scientists say, I can do as well. Go ahead. So the scientists came to God, please give me all the, the dust, the dirt. God said, you make your own. You were created, man was created from dust, am I right? Scientists can't create. There's no way. A creator needs to have something to create. You cannot take something from God and say, I create something. So God is the creator of things. And on that seventh day, God rests. When God created creation, He rests. Which means that, after Genesis chapter uh, 2, verse 3, God rests. There was no more creation. In Hebrew chapter 4, verses 4, for he has spoke in a certain place of the seventh day in the way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his work. So we see that Genesis, God created, then he rests. What? God created at that time was sinless. Everything was beautiful. It was perfect. It was in perfect fellowship with Him. He created man to have fellowship with Him. God created everything. Then God rests. He stopped creating. His creative activity ends. And after His creation, what He did is He actually set about sustaining it to see what He has created. It's like when we, we, when we do a pond, you know, those days Reuben spent all the time making the pond, tom, 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 wow, beautiful, everything nice, really, right? After everything is done, he sit back and watch the creation. There's fish swimming by. Enjoy. Until one day the pump spoil. The fish died. <laughs> that was the end of the that was the end of the creation, right? <laughs> right? But God, that's the same thing as God created us, right? And after that, He rests. He enjoyed because He wants to have fellowship with us. But man failed God, right? 
God made His creation. He didn't make robots. Simple instruction. God failed. We men, we, we, we fail. Colossians 1.17 And He is before all things, and in Him all things yes, All things are His. He did the thing. That's the creation. So we see the beginning. God created everything. Then as we move on, when we look at the future, we know there's a beginning, there's an end, right? So what's happening in the future? When we see, according to the Bible, in the future, God is going to create once more. Where do we find this? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 13. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth which, in which righteousness dwell. So we need to remember, God created. Now, in 2 Peter 3.13, we are looking at a new heaven and a new earth. In Revelation 21, verses 1, Now, I saw, what did he see? What did John see? I, see? I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. How it passed away? Is it going to be a big bang? We do not know, right? But it did say it will pass away and God's word means it will pass away, right? Also, there was no more sea. Imagine the new earth got no sea. What does it mean? No fish. Ah. Those who go fishing are habis. Lah. But there's river. Revelation said there's river, but there's no sea. Sea separate mankind, am I right? I cannot go to Singapore because there's a big straits. I cannot walk to Singapore unless there's a bridge is built. But in Revelation 21, it says that new heaven, new earth, and in this new earth, there's no sea. Which means that there will be no more boundaries. It doesn't matter whether we are Chinese, Indians, Eurasians, we are all one family of God. And that's what it is. And open boundaries children of God that comes in. Today, we are separated because it is man-made. Sad to say, a lot of this man-made place was early, during the European time where the European took over and started to carve out for their own use. Right? But here, God is bringing healing. There's no mercy. So in the future, God will have a total will totally recreate the earth and heavens. The only thing that moves from this world to the next are uh, God. So what we see is that the old will be gone. The new, God will be there and His righteous people that we will put in there. And this future creation will be void of sin. Back to this first original plan. Void of sin, void of rebellion, and the things that derive from them. That is why we look towards a new place. Every one of us, when we go, we, can, we will not go to heaven straight away, you know. Don't think that, pum, okay? You need to read the Bible if you think that you go straight to heaven. We have the new world, okay? There's new heaven and new earth before the a rupture that goes through the whole thing. Are you prepared for this new place or not? Okay, don't say yeah, yeah, yeah when the time comes. Hey, God, I'm not ready yet. Huh? I've not received my Ang Pao yet. Uh, those who receive Ang Pao, please make sure you pay your tithes as well. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 7, verses 15 to 17. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to a living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. Wow, that's like sounds like paradise. And that's what God wants us to be. You know, going through the whole thing, you know. No need aircon, uh, no need fan, just nice temperature. Uh, don't, worry, don't need to worry about what you wear, whether your body odor smells or not, you know. You just relax in the presence of God. So we have, we know that in the beginning, God created. Now in the future, God is going to recreate because of sin. Today, we are in between the bracket. That's where we are here today. We are not from the, from the past, nor from the future. We are in between what has God done for us. So those who place their faith in Christ for salvation are different. We are different from the people outside. You know, it's, it's, not the whole, it's not the whole creation, but the new creation is within the existing of the first creation. God didn't say, you see, if I'm a designer, I say, ah, throw lah. This bunch of hopeless people, throw away, right? But God is not like that because His nature is love. And He still picks up what is goodness. God always sees that goodness in there to bring us. So the new creation is within the existence of the first creation that is every one of us here. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10, but you are a chosen generation. We need to know we are a chosen generation. We are not like a tida appa generation, okay? We are special. We need to know that we are special. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That you may proclaim the praise of him who calls you out from darkness into the marvelous light. We were all once in darkness. We are called to be the light. Every one of us here is a brilliant, thousand watt LED bright light. But God didn't call you to be here just to shine. We can come here for His glory. But God's glory is for us to go to the places of darkness and to shine brightly. Your workplace, the places that seems impossible, God wants us to go and shine. Sometimes I say, Pastor, so places are so difficult. When you love God, it doesn't matter. If God calls you to go, obedient, you just go. But if God don't cause you, don't be a hero, I go there, all right? Must listen to his voice. Recently, I told Pastor Rajan, I said, I have a calling to Syria. Pastor said, You go, lah. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody need to go. I have not told my wife yet. My wife said, You go by yourself. <laughs> that's a burden, that's a cry. When you say, Why you go? God only give us two commandments. To love Him, to love our neighbour. Simple. If we can't love, how can we do the Great Commission? Everything revolves around love. If we can't love, how can we do that?
without the new creation. We will not have all the benefits that we receive from Him. But we talk about new. New means something that never seen before. Today, if I say there's a new heaven, new earth, our mind can't comprehend. Because even creation itself, sometimes we're already debating, you know, sure or not. We must have that faith. We believe God created the world through creation. Then we must understand a new heaven, new earth is coming to us. The new God did something unseen in history. Why? Because God is a history maker. Right? He doesn't depend on us. He's a history maker. Creation brought into existence not because of some science theory or thing, because He's God. Creation is something that God does. He spoke and things comes to be. He don't need to go through formulas and everything. That's the power that He is. We can make things, but only God created things out of nothing. Because we still need some substance. God doesn't need that. So what was in the past now doesn't matter. That we are here, here. Galatians chapter 6, verses 15. For neither circumstances, circumcision counts for anything. Right? Those days they have to go through circumcisions, right? To show, to prove. So here Paul is saying, For neither circumcisions count for anything, nor uncircumcises, but a new creation. Remember, those in Christ, created to be perfect fellowship with God, just as He did in His first creation. If anyone is in Christ. As we move on to 2024, as we move on in our lives, we need to ask ourselves, are we in Christ? Where is Christ in our midst? You say you have Jesus. Is Jesus sitting in the chair there? Or is Jesus really in you? So as we move on, we don't need to have the firecrackers to frighten off the demons of our lives. We are reminded of the blood of Christ that died for us and covered us. It's about His righteousness. We need to ask ourselves, how confident are we that we are in Christ? Can we let past habits and thoughts that take us away from God be passed away? Remember, we are a new creation. Don't go and collect your garbage, you know. Sometimes when we move, begin the year, I don't know whether some of you do it or not. When you look through the whole thing, oh, let's start a new year. Let's make sure we throw away all whatever we don't need. Spring cleaning. You go through. I think I need this one. Maybe this is true. Maybe this is, at the end of the day, only one thing to throw away. No. What you don't need, throw away. Move into the newness. Everyone in Christ is a new creation. All has gone. You're forgiven. It's about not about how good you are, it's how 
lovable our God is. He never looked at our junk. But He sees us as a child that He loves. And that's why we are, we are the call to Him. As we move on in life, let's make it a different. Let's make it a different. Thinking that every one of you today, you are a new creation. For what purpose? So that we can glorify His holy name. In the early days, we say, oh, we are not worthy. You're not worthy. It's about, not about your worthiness. It's about His worthiness in each and every one of your lives. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.